Hey, look at that. Yes. Trina. Hi. Hi, Fran. So good to see you. Good to see you too. I like your sweater, bro. Thanks, yo. We're <laughs> in the wings of freedom today. No big deal. No big deal. It's appropriate, I think. I think yeah, it's, it's the right day to wear this one. If you were going to wear it, today would be the day. If I was smart, I would have ran down to the, um, to like downstairs and done done like a change, just like thrown on, thrown on one of our Attack on Titan shirts. <laughs> oh, look, I look there's, there's time before the next panel. You could do it on the next. Oh, I'm going to do a costume change for the next panel. Oh, sure. Oh, what's up, Allie? Hi, Hi Allie. Uh, all the way from New Zealand. I, I wonder what they get in there. It's is it the next day? It's the next day in New Zealand, right? Hello, in the future, Allie. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I see a bunch of comments. Hello, everyone that's watching. Hello. Wow. Look at all of the things. I know, oh, right? Awesome. So, so much love. I I love it. Uh. So just a quick, before we jump in there, uh, this is the time where I get to catch up with my friends and talk about whatever and ask whatever. And then we're definitely going to touch on some things. Um, Bryce is going to help me understand everything that I just saw in the last uh, 24 hours. And then we'll- Did we you watch Titan stuff? Oh, of course. Are you caught up? No, I didn't, I didn't get, oh, you know what? This isn't even working, right? Like you guys can still hear me, right? Yeah, that your headphones are just for show. That's all good, man. <laughs> I just keep them on. You had me tricked. I mean, I was like, I was like, I'm hearing you through my headset. Oh man, <laughs> that's the show days are crazy. You got, okay, Trina? So oh, so before we get so um, questions. We love you, chat. Please feel free to talk amongst each other. You can try to get onto our, our big screen. That is no problem. And I always, I love the the best are when they're like, is Brad even watching chat? And then I I always throw those comments on there um, just to let them know. But this is the, the Hangout panel where we all get to catch up. We haven't seen each other in forever. A lot of times our lives are so crazy that we haven't had a, a chance to really like check in with each other. Um, and then on the VIP panel is where we take all of your questions and I will shut the heck up. And it's just question after question on VIP to get into VIP. How do you ask by any hangout, by any autograph, by any, any personalized message from Bryce or Trina, and then come into the VIP area and I will shut my trap and you can ask whatever you want to. So this is really just a, a good way for us to catch up and have fun and, and hang out. Uh, and then uh, VIPs when we answer all your questions. So Trina, is this your first uh, vi virtual event? Uh, so we did a virtual event for Funimation in my August. <laughs> Sometime last year. <laughs> what is time? What is time? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we did that. And um, I think we did another one. Didn't we do another one, Bryce? We did. We had a panel at uh, Armageddon's yes. virtual. I mean, we we were in New Zealand virtually. It was <laughs> we were there. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm so jealous of uh, everyone at Armageddon being able to go and and have a great time at a real event. Um, you know, I, I can't wait for when when things are safe enough for us to do that again. Same. How are, how are your hangouts this morning, Trina? They were great. It was so, um, I was terrified yesterday that I wouldn't know what to do or what button to push or, but thankfully Brad, you and your team walked me through it this morning and it was, it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So I didn't feel as incompetent. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Good, good, good. I, I find that it was really kind of touching. Um, Lucy Christian went live, um, it was funny, like she hit her break on Color World Live, and all of a sudden we get a notification like Lucy Christian is live. I was like, "That's weird." I thought she was, thought she was on break, and she was so excited to just talk to people, mm -hmm. be a person, and be like, "Tell me about your cats and your kids." And <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, Trina, I I have never asked you this story, so okay. I am excited. How did you get started? How did you get in front of a microphone? Tell me, tell us about your journey to becoming an actor. 
So um, I started acting when I was nine years old uh, with my local community theater. And then I started touring uh, with a play when I was 13. Um, and then I acted throughout high school and then I went to university and I was like, I'm gonna be a grown up and I'm gonna be a lawyer. And um, then, uh, you know, I was in college, so I was broke because that's your job in college. I was really good at it. And um, a friend of mine told me about an audition at Funimation and I told him like, no, Jimmy, I'm gonna be a grown up and I'm gonna like go to law school and I'm gonna be a lawyer and have grown up things. And he was like, it pays. And I was like, when's the audition? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I auditioned for Funimation and I was cast. And then um, I, after university, I just, uh, you know, the acting bug bit me again and uh, here I am. Uh, Do you know Crystal Laporte? I don't. Okay, so I had never, never heard of, did not know, just had, um, we work with several agents, and he's like, hey, I'm going to pitch you this thing. I'm like, I don't know who this is, but I like you, so let's do this. And Crystal Laporte was like my 2020, like, she was a friend I didn't know I needed. Yeah. So she is a full-time lawyer. Oh. And then kind of like Newton Pittman. So like Newton Pittman's a full-time nurse, and then he's like, and my night job is I go and yell into a microphone. <laughs> And Crystal Laporte is the same thing. She's a oh, lawyer. Wow. And then at night she goes and yells into a microphone. I thought like, man, that's super cool. Yeah, that the concept of a day job isn't something that people just made up. Uh, <laughs> before I was able to move to a full-time voice actor, uh, I did web design, you know, and which is, which is a great kind of day job to have because you could do it at any time. Mm -hmm. So if I had an audition or if, you know, I had to go into the studio. I could always move web design to another time. Um, so it, it worked really nicely. Uh, I It's um, the idea of like side hustle, like never became so real until 2020. We're all like, oh, well, my my hustle's gone. What Can I still do, right? It's like, is my, is my side hustle essential or can I do my side hustle online? Right. I, I feel like it really... So Trina, tell me about the restaurant. Where have you been able to keep doors open? Are you delit like tell what tell me about that? Because I feel like you just started that and then the world ended. We did. Um, so I am fortunate uh, in many, many ways. Uh, one of which is to have amazing uh, people in my life, like Bryce, obviously, and his family. And um, I am fortunate enough to have found my life partner. Uh, Justin and he is a chef and uh, we opened um, a Japanese izakaya in September of 2019 okay. and uh, it was great and um, we were doing really well and then the um, the pandemic happened and um, we went to uh, takeout only and then in October of 2020 um just shy or just after being open for a year uh six months of which were uh to go only with yeah. nobody in the space um, my partner was diagnosed with leukemia and uh, we immediately went into hospital and uh, unfortunately we closed the restaurant uh, because he is still in active treatment but the good news is is that uh, he's responding super well to treatment and we're very very fortunate to have some really amazing doctors and be at a really great hospital. And um, so we're just, you know, taking it day by day. And unfortunately the restaurant is gone, but it's just a building and um, the people are what matter and yeah. we're still here. Is there, did you guys ever do merch for the restaurant? Are there like logos and things like that? Yeah, so we um, we had t-shirts and hats and things like that. Bryce, did you get a hat? Did I get you a hat? Or a t-shirt? I don't know if I got a hat. I'd love one. Friend? We still have some floating around. Bad print. <laughs> no, not at all. I I feel super fortunate because I was um, lucky enough to be out in Dallas a few times and able to sneak over to the restaurant more than once. Um, and oh my gosh, um, like amazing. Just, Justin is an incredible chef, um, and Trina is incredible in what she does. I was around and hanging out with Trina when the concept of the restaurant 
um, and all the research was happening. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough <laughs> to go and do research with Trina, which means eat at the best restaurant in every place that we traveled to. Um, we were in Australia and we were staying at, at, at I, I believe this was during one of the supernovas. Yeah. But we were we were staying at this hotel and um, there was this one restaurant that was kind of hidden. It was this- Oh, the one that Jack told us about. Yes. So I walked by that restaurant at least a dozen times and I didn't even see it. And Trina's like, we have to go to this place. It's it's kind of hidden and it's, yeah. I hear it's amazing. And oh my gosh, such an amazing experience being there. And and whenever you, if, if anyone gets an opportunity to eat with Trina and she says, one, eat at this restaurant, definitely do it. <laughs> and two, if she says, order these things a hundred percent. Like I, I go to the restaurant and I'm just like, what am I eating tonight, Trina? <laughs> and it's always like the best thing ever. We had, I can't remember where we were. I think we were in London, um, but we were somewhere and I don't drink, I'm, I'm not as, as great with beer profiles. I'm, I'm more cocktail leaning, but I would like buy all these beers and Bryce would be like, I can't drink all those. I'm like, just take a sip of each one and tell me which one you like the most. And you you loved the Hitachino, the rice beer one. And Ooh, we ended up yeah. carrying that because you were like, this is the beer you have to have at the restaurant. I'm, I'm happy to be the beer guinea pig. <laughs> I'm, I'm never opposed to that. <laughs> so Meliodas, Meliodas comes from a true place, it sounds like, Bryce. Oh, definitely. Yeah, got to gotta pull inspiration from somewhere. That's part of my research, right? <laughs> like Meliodas. Oh, man. So is there still a website, Trina, for the restaurant? There is. Um, it's salarymanoakcliff.com. And um, it's also on Instagram at the moment. Uh, as I said, we're closed, unfortunately. Um, and we don't uh, know what's going to happen with that uh, as far as, you know, his timeline for treatment and stuff. Um, but luckily, that just means that that's us. Yeah, that's us. Uh, but luckily, that means that in the future of uh, this year or next year, Bryce and I are going to have to eat at a lot of a lot of places. And yes. reasons more. Do you do you guys ever use the motto? Oh no, it's not even called that anymore. Um, oh, it is still called that. It must have been called Urban Spoon, and then Urban Spoon was purchased by Zomato. Do you guys ever use that app for poking around? Uh, I use I use Yelp a lot, um, and I use um, Ver Veronica Taylor told me about uh, this one that I used for years, but I can't remember the name of it because. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah. I'll it at some point, either during this panel or the VIP panel or when I'm falling asleep. So there's, I have a rule that if I am near a 4.5 or above, like there's a, there's a, a search rating for four point, like I will, I will drive 30, 40 miles out of my way to go eat <laughs> at 4.5 or above. If you find a 4.9 in Zomato, like it's, you pre it's a all stops like delay your it's call the people tell them you're going to be late like it's definitely <laughs> i've never been let down um rachel jamie Brittany will alexis will text text me from a city and say where am i eating and then i'll i will i will give them a top three and then they'll i'll leave it you know to them to pick the top three um it's just yeah when you travel you get it like you get to know like what it should look like and what should, what you could see on the menu. And if like, you know, if you can trust it. Okay. Is there a place on here, Trina, to buy apparel from salary man? Um, no, unfortunately. Um, if you follow on Instagram, uh, we just recently uh, packed up the restaurant and uh, put a bunch of stuff in storage that we're probably going to be uh, selling. Um, but yeah, just follow Salaryman Oak Cliff on Instagram and and we'll have stuff pop up there sometime. Okay, good. Because we want to help support. Uh, oh, thank you. So that was the whole reason I'm poking around and putting stuff. Oh, okay. Salaryman Oak Cliff. Is that the Instagram or is the Instagram shorter than Salaryman Oak Cliff? Uh, the, the Instagram is Salaryman underscore Oak Cliff. Okay. Okay, and then we'll put that up. Um, so that way, yes, if you 
need help with apparel at all, we can make that available to fans. That's so nice. Thank you. That way they can help support uh, you and Justin uh, through what you guys are experiencing right now and then into the future and then with the next venture. So if you guys will go ahead and hit up that salaryman underscore Oak Cliff, I will drop a link in the chat to support Trina and Justin and uh, let's let's clean out their closets and if they run out of stuff, <laughs> we'll just more. So, okay, that's awesome. I appreciate you catching us up on that. I've been super dying to like, life is stupid and it's hard to like stop everything, but thank you for like updating us on like where that was at in the process. Um, okay, who have you, so Bryce, are you totally caught up on Attack on Titan? Have you watched everything in season four? So um, I am watching every single week as the show is released in Japanese. I, I feel like it's back, you know, I, I think seven years ago when I was watching the first season, like every episode comes out and then it ends and I'm like, I need more of this. Um, so yes, I, I have watched everything so far in Japanese and I'm loving every single episode. Like it's, it's got me back to trying to guess what's going to happen and guessing wrong every week. <laughs> in season, Trina, are you caught up? Are you, do you only know what you've recorded? What is, should we spoil things for you? Tell, tell I only know what's been recorded on my, on my behalf. Okay. Um, I have been able to talk to Bryce a couple of times and uh, Bryce will be like, do you want to know? And I'm like, no, yes, no, yes. <laughs> so, I don't know, but I, I was like, let me just guess a couple things. And I guessed a couple things. And Bryce was like, I feel like you're in the right vicinity. So I kind of know. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know anything. So I prefer uh, to go on the journey with Mikasa as, as we record, which has been really fun, uh, terrifying. Because like when, when I first saw Aaron or knew Aaron, older Aaron, I was like, no, that's a homeless man. That's not Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> or then I was like, no, it's a like, that's Aaron if he like ran away and joined like Guns and Roses or something. <laughs> had, like four years of like hardcore binging and like all the and stuff, you know? But yeah, no, it's been it's been really interesting and I'm so excited to see what happens to um, all of the characters as we progress in the final season. Um, I'm really excited to see what happens with Aaron from some of the spoilers that are not spoilers, but some of the, for some of the stuff that Bryce and I have talked about. So uh, at what point did you all know that this was the end? When were you like, when did the whole like final, like, this is it, this is the final or, or have we always known? like, at what point did everyone know? Did you know that this was going to be the last one? So Funimation was very clear about, the title of this season and oh. the title is attack on titan the final season like that's that's when we found out um and you know it, it's it's bittersweet i was hopeful that we'd get to live with these characters for years and years and it just would never end um but now we finally get to know what's going on hopefully because mm -hmm. i still like the show continues to surprise me and change and um, Brad, I can't remember. Have you watched anything from this season yet? I've I've seen three three episodes into season four. So awesome. I've seen the big Great. Four. You are exactly where all the Toonami viewers are. If you guys are watching Toonami every week, episode, I believe, four hits tonight. And, okay. oh, man, like, I'll just tell you, your mind is going to get blown time and time again. Um, it, it just keeps doing that. And, and I hope, um, I hope it gets wrapped up in a beautiful way. I'm, I'm sure with, with the way the show is playing out, I feel like this was all planned so long ago. Mm -hmm. Like there's things that, that happen that they put right in front of you. They're like, here's the answer, but you don't know. I mean, I don't, know. I never got it. Um, <laughs> so, so it's bittersweet. And like, we're finally going to know these things, all these questions that the show has continued to open up. Like we're going to get some answers. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's exciting 
to uh, to go on that journey and experience that. Um, so I, I can't wait. Like I said, every week I'm dying to see what's going to happen next. And um, it's it's been good. It's been really good. Trina, why is Mikasa the best character in that anime? I don't know that she is. What? Are I you? don't think that Mikasa is the best character in Attack on Titan. I love her. Who's don't that? get me wrong. I love her. And she changed my life and introduced me to so many amazing people and gave me so many opportunities. But I don't know that she's the best. Who's the best? Um, it, well, I'm looking at it from an actor's standpoint, right? So as an actor, like I love Mikasa and I love the journey that she's been on emotionally and everything like that. But if I was to be able to choose and say like, this is the character yeah. that I would want to play, yeah. it would be Aaron, hands down. Like his emotional growth, like all of his scenes that he gets to do, where he's going in the final season possibly. Like Bryce gets to play all of these characters in one character. It's so cool. But without Mikasa, he's dead in the first episode. <laughs> True. True. I, I, I literally, I shut the anime off after three episodes. I was like, I can't, if, if I have to listen to Aaron whine like a little bitch, <laughs> anymore, I cannot. And the best moment is when Mikasa slaps him across the face and was like, you're going to die. Your mom's dead. Get your ass out of here. Or you're your freaking Titan food, you piece of and like, and then it was just steadily downhill for Aaron from there. <laughs> I feel like season two, and I, you like, you know, what I, like Mikasa, with without Mikasa, there is no Aaron Yeager, right? Yeah. Like, no, I I think I think you're right. Like Mikasa is like, she's like the rock. She's like the the sound of reason. Like Aaron is. A bundle of bad ideas. <laughs> oh, 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 always terrible ideas, Aaron. No, like like that was our theme the whole first season. Aaron, no, no. Uh, I'm gonna kill them now. No, no. Aaron, bad idea, bad idea. I mean, he he constantly has a, a ton of terrible ideas, and Mikasa, yes, has saved his life many many times. Yes, um, I just. I just had this realization, which I don't know why it's taken me seven years to come to this realization, but in real life, I'm the Aaron and you're the Mikasa. Because I'll be like, listen, guys, I know that we've already been to like five different places to research, research, research drinks, but we just needed to know one more, one more. And Bryce is like, horrible idea. We're not doing that. And they said, it'll be so fun. And you're like, no! I probably do that too. I brought you on that journey. <laughs> I just realized that, like in real life, it's like Tuna, no. <laughs> and now you'll never unhear it. Like for the rest of your life, if you, if you think it might be a bad, like in your head, you'll hear Trina, no. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay, who <laughs> you? As an actor, who do you love as a character? So as an actor, you said you would jump into Aaron in a heartbeat, but oh yeah. Who do you who do you love as a character? Like who would you want beside you? If you could pick anybody in that in that show to to like go out into the world with, who do you go out with? As a character or as an actor? Because if I'm choosing actors, it's definitely gonna be Bryce. <laughs> like that's that's my train that's, of note. That's, that's, that's easy. So if you're going to take, if Trina is going to go out to dinner with somebody from Attack on Titan, who do you go out to dinner with? Sasha. Yes. That's a great answer. I, you know, what's funny. We have a <laughs> license for Attack on Titan and um, we don't, we don't know the names of the characters until we know them well enough to stop calling them things that we make up. And Sasha has been potato girl, like forever. And there's actually officially licensed art with her, like in potatoes. It's, what 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 makes you love Sasha so much? Potatoes. <laughs> who would you have dinner with, Bryce? Like who no, would you? That's the right answer. I mean, definitely <laughs> not Aaron. No, <laughs> no way. Aaron's gonna make a mess. Aaron's gonna get kicked out of the restaurant. Um, definitely like not Levi. Le Levi would be a terrible person to eat dinner with because you take a bite and spill something, and he'd kick you in the face. <laughs> Um, you don't think he would just talk about life? You don't think that if 
if if he ag- like first of all if he agreed right because let's all admit that he'd probably blow most people off but if he agreed you don't think he would like i just see him with a glass of, of anything and just like three hours later he stops talking <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I feel like Levi is the person you want if you're in a fight. Oh, for I sure. I don't want to hang out with him after because, like, I, I don't know. I'm too messy to be around Levi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, Hanji, I think Hanji is, I feel like, I was like, why is this person here? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I'm disturbed by this person. And then you just keep on, and there's, there just seems to be so much to where everyone else is pretty easy to figure out. Like, I feel like I'm still undecided about Hanji. I, I feel like if you really wanted a night where things would get really weird, <laughs> that's, that's Hanji. Like, it, it's going to get weird if you're hanging out with Hanji. Oh, man. Which, which could be great. I mean, if you're up for that kind of night, hey. She's the kind of like she's one of those like um, dude. Where's my car? <laughs> that, that's going out with Hanji would be like an episode of Dude, Where's My Car? <laughs> okay, Bryce, who am I supposed to be rooting for? I don't know who's good and I don't know who's bad. I don't even know who an Eldian is. I like I I know nothing. It was like watching Trigun. And I was like, I totally get this anime, and I figured it out, and it's all political. And then you get season three, and I'm like, what the? What am I watching? I don't know anything. Like, it's all different. Yeah, the the honest truth, I don't know. Um, I, I, I honestly do not know who you should be rooting for. Um, you know, as the, the actor who gets to play Aaron, I'm yeah. always rooting that Aaron does not die. But... <laughs> No one is safe in this show. Yeah. Absolutely no one is safe. Um, we've seen it in the past. Like, character has been around. You fall in love with the character, and then they're out of your life forever. Um, and it's crazy. So I don't think that that is any different about this season. No one is safe at all, uh, including all of the characters that we've loved this long. Um it, that's what I'm guessing. So um, I, I really don't know, but I am cheering for Aaron, um, you know, selfishly, because I want to continue on that journey with Aaron. But I don't know who you should be cheering for. I don't like like the lines are blurred again. And and it, it's really fascinating and really fun. You know, to Trina's point, um, I've, I've now been able to play Aaron um, kind of growing up. Like, like I've played him many different ways here. Um, Itty bitty angsty teen Aaron, um, you know, like Titan Aaron and whatever Aaron is now. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know what Aaron is now. Um, Cause so it's interesting. He's different. I, I'm gonna talk in a very like like nebulous way to not spoil anything. Um, you know, it's it's been really fun to to discover new things and 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 um, change uh, the way that I've been portraying a character that I've been for so long. Uh, so it, it's it's been really really great to do that and. Uh, Mike McFarlane, the director, fortunately, he knows what's going on. He has read the manga. He has he has learned all these things, and he tells us information that we need to know only when we need to know it. Cool. So it, it's been really cool to to you know create with him and and to to do these things that we've we've been able to do recently. Um, for the show, it's. I it's like how you're holding back, so you. Oh, no, can feel. I, yeah, you can. I'm feel trying it. so hard. You can feel it, like even across the street, like you can feel that you're like. Mm. I know things now. I know. <laughs> I did an interview, um, you know, just a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't know the things I know now, and I feel like the world has changed again. It's so fun. Um, 
So, and to spoil it wouldn't be fair to the show and, and sure. to yep. you guys that are watching. Yep. And the thing that's so fun is everyone that's watching this now that has seen more than I have, like, I could be completely wrong. You guys know way more than I do. And I'm, you know, experiencing it week by week. Yeah. Um, and, and it's so fun. And uh, as an actor, so interesting, so interesting to be able to do this. So, yeah, I mean, Trina, I, I agree. Like, I'm I'm so lucky to be able to, to do this. And it's not, it's not very often that you uh, get cast in roles that give you that kind of challenge and that kind of opportunity. Um, you know, there's, there's moments in this show that Aaron is just breaking down and, and, and screaming and, and, and finding these, these emotional things that are hard to convey in English. Right. Um, you know, there's a, a, a scene, I think it was the end of season two. Oh my gosh. I just, I love that moment. And I, I wanted it to come through so much, um, that, that I was forced to take myself to a really dark place because I feel like Aaron was in just such a, a horrible position in such a, a dark moment to, to get there. I had to put myself you know, in, in his shoes, so to say, it, and, and not the same way, you know, I've never experienced what Aaron yeah. has experienced, but um, you know, to, to take myself into that darkness was not fun at all, yeah. but, I, I just am so proud of what we were able to get out of that um, recording session. Um, it is hands down, in my opinion, one of the best dubbing scenes ever. Like your performance in it was amazing. I think I even talked to you like right after I recorded that scene. And I was like, I don't know if you know what's about to happen, but it's going to be really hard. So I hope you're ready. But you killed it. It was awesome and amazing. And like, mind-bogglingly good sincerely I, I really yeah I, I really appreciate that i think we were at a convention right before i was going in to record it and you're like i don't know this is <laughs> i don't know about this you're, no like, pressure you're no gonna pressure, do but I, I don't know what you're gonna do and and i remember saying like i don't know what i'm gonna do i don't know how i'm gonna get myself into that feeling yeah um and uh, it was really difficult and really challenging. And I'm just happy that I was able to do it in that in that moment because you just you just get that one chance, right? You're, you're in there, and even though like it's not live, you know, there there's not the pressure of recording live. It's a it's a different type of pressure, though. Um, you just get that that chance, and you hope that you know you can get yourself there. Um, and and it's always. It's always awesome when when that happens the way you want it to. And um, I'll just say about some of the things that are coming, um, there were definitely new challenges that I faced as an actor, you know, changing this character that I've I've been part of for so long. Um, and I, I feel um, like Mike was able to help me get to where I wanted it to sound. And I'm really proud of what we were able to record and what you guys are about to see uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm really excited for people to see um, what we've, what we've been doing. Trina, did you see the, um, Sorry, the I'm bouncing because I'm happy for Bryce. Like, <laughs> did you see the first reveal? Like when we found out the female, Titan, it, like, did you see that coming? You said that you try to guess a lot. Did you guess that she was the female Titan? Like, at, at what point did you kind of like, or did you, of any of your guesses, did you figure out like who was a Titan? Um, I, I didn't know, like during the, right, at, I, I guess it was during the recording of season one, I went to a convention like right off the bat. I think we'd only recorded a couple episodes and I was sitting next to David Matranga. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I was sitting next to David Matranga and um, somebody brought him a big poster to sign and it was like his character and the Colossal and Rob's character and the Armored and Lauren's character and the female Titan. I was like, oh, that's so cute. They're all lined up with... 
<laughs> David was like, oh, you didn't know. I was like, what is happening in the world? <laughs> like, I knew about Aaron, but I didn't know about the other characters. And, and okay. so like, that's how I found out. Okay, okay. Um, was it, oh, man, so you didn't even find out in the booth. So what, what was your next recording session like after, after seeing that visual? Like, did oh, you in my next session, Aaron died. <laughs> I was like, wait, these kids are titans. The lead character is dead and I have no job security. Like <laughs> what is happening, Mike? Because if Bryce is gone, I'm next. Oh, and no. <laughs> yeah. um, it was terrifying. <laughs> um, Bryce, what, at what point did you know, like when did you know you were a titan? Um, well, I didn't guess it when I watched it the first time. Cause I, I watched in uh, Japanese before I was cast in the show. Oh really? Uh, and I started watching when there were six episodes out in Japan. Okay. Um, so sorry guys, season one, <laughs> you haven't seen any oh, of it. Oh gosh, yeah, sorry. Sorry guys. Um, but uh, episode five is the one that Trina's talking about where Aaron dies. And yeah. episode six, there's just flashbacks. It's yeah. like Aaron as a kid and Mikasa and their backstory. Yeah. And Aaron's still dead. So I was like, this show just Game of Thrones me. <laughs> and, and every week, like, I, 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 was, I looked forward to watching the next episode every single week. And I feel like I'm back in that same excitement as season one. Like, every week, I can't wait. Like, I, I can't help myself but to watch everything that's out in Japanese. Um, and normally I won't do that. Normally I won't stay so close when I know it's still kind of far, a couple weeks away from me yeah. actually jumping in and, and performing, but I can't help myself. It's, it's like, I, you know, I'm gonna, I, I can't wait to see how the mix in English sounds. So I'm staying up to watch Toonami, yeah. uh, little Bryce Pappenbrook power hour with Titan <laughs> and Sword Art Online. So can't wait to see how those shows sound mixed. And uh, cause I, I haven't seen what we've recorded yet back in English. You know, I, I, um, I jump in there and sometimes other actors are in before me and sometimes I'm the first one in. So, um, you know, you, you don't really know how everything's going to come together um, uh, until the show actually comes out and you see it all mixed. So it's been exciting to watch every week on Toonami and then Sunday afternoon to catch the new episode in Japanese. It's, it's just been really cool. Very cool. Um, in terms of, so is everyone on the island, are they all the same race? Is it race? Like what, when, when they say Eldians, like what, is that like a country that they're like, what is that referring to? When we when we hear the term Eldians, it's coming. It, it started in season three. You heard that be talked about, and now they're talking about it all the time. And people are getting called Eldian, and then something else that I keep trying to catch, but I don't like. What like what is that? Yeah, yeah. In my mind, it's it's still like it's still coming together for me. Okay, right? like, it's not fully fleshed out yet, at, at least where I am. Um, so we don't really know the extent of all these people in this other place. Um, we don't know how many, you know, countries or races or all of that. Um, but we are starting to learn that, you know, there's, there's other people that are related to the people that we've been with the whole time yes. in this new place. And there's some kind of connection yep. um, between those people. So uh, yeah, still kind of coming together, I would say. Trina, I, I don't know the extent there. At, at what point, Trina, did you, um, were you like, they, they've they been talking about going to the sea for like, right? That's the big thing. Armin's been mm. like, guys, there's, and at one point, I will say, as much as I don't like Armin, there's, a one, there's one scene where I feel like Aaron says, he's like, Guys, the sea is out there. And we can't die right now because we owe it. We owe it to everybody to like they like he he picks up that mantle and he's like he's like, you know, Armin's been using it as his reason to stay alive for all this time. 
And then when when we thought everything was lost, then Aaron's like, the sea, the sea. What Trina? At what point? Um, or what was your reaction when you when you get and you're like, oh damn, like this this thing that they're on is nothing compared to how big the world just became. What was that like for you? Um. I, for me as an actor, it was like, oh, we're at the sea. We get a beach episode. This is awesome. Oh, like, yeah. Everyone just chill out. We're going to get like some snow cones. We're going to change into bathing suits. We're going to swim around and splash. It'll be great. Because if any series needs a beach episode, yes. I feel like this is the one. Um, so that was nice. Uh, they didn't get snow cones, but they got to play in the water. That was nice. It's like, oh, yeah, we're just friends. Um, but the, I think the scene that you're referring to where Aaron is like screaming at Armin, he's like, the sea, we have to go to the sea, is when Armin is like crispy. Spoiler. Uh, oh. But you'll know what I mean if I say crispy. But oh, Armin's yeah. like down there and whatever, and Aaron's like, no, we have to go to the sea. And at that point, Mikasa is also in a traumatic state. So like that, <clears throat> that scene in particular when it was like, you know, th those things were happening, trying not to say anything that spoils it. Uh, when those things were happening, it was just such a, a, a heartbreaking moment. And then, you know, things happen and then they get to the sea and and um, it's just this magical moment of relief. And uh, uh, it, it, for me as an actor it, and, and playing Mikasa, it was like, oh, we're at the sea finally. and. And and like we we're here and it's okay and we're gonna be okay and then you know other things happen. Yeah, that's what. I, like, how long were you able to stay in that place where you're like it's okay? Because I can't remember how long it was. But <laughs> I mean, as long as Attack on Titan allows, right? It's like run for your lives, fight for your lives, and now rest and enjoy this five second break. No, yeah. run for your lives. <laughs> it's like I mean, it's. It's such a roller coaster show, and there's so many um, unknowns, and you never, you have no security in general. Um, it, it, and I think that's what makes it so exciting to watch. Hey, Brad, I, I'm interested to know why Armin didn't resonate with you as a character. I know. I was like, what? Oh, my, God. Armin? I, oh my yeah. gosh. What? <laughs> such a great character. But he's, so I, I have a hard time with fear. Like I, I, I can't, I shy away from characters that are afraid. I can't, I will mute them. I'll hit the 10 second or the 15 second. Like if I just, I can, I can only take so much fear. And I yeah. feel like Orman is afraid for so much of his life that it's yeah. really until the moment that Trina's talking about where I'm like, damn, it's a bat like, to me, that episode, to be honest with you, I stopped hating it so much. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what makes Armin relatable. Like, it's real. Like, I would be terrified. I would be a terrible cadet um, in that situation. Really? Uh, I mean, the Titans are terrifying. It's, it's like, I think as, like, someone watching the show, you should be so afraid of those things. Um, yeah. Like and and I think like Armin is such an interesting character because it that's that's like real and he's like like even someone who might not be as physically blessed as like a Levi is and and is truly terrified to his core is showing more bravery than anyone else. Like I just think it's such an interesting way of of uh, you know, establishing that character and then allowing that character to grow in the show. Like, I, I don't know. I, I think it's so, it's such an interesting character. Also, um, and I hope this doesn't spoil anything and I don't really know what this means, but Josh <laughs> really plays Armin, yeah. but he's also the narrator of the show. It is not me, it's not Aaron, it is Armin who is narrating this show, and I don't know why. It means we both die, Bryce. Well, we both yeah. dead. Well, <laughs> Armin was, but, but could Armin be talking from some kind of afterlife? Like, yeah. what? where is Armin talking? Where in time is Armin talking from as the narrator? I don't, I don't know. Like, like, mind blown. So, like, first off, like, 
I know Armin's, a, you know, afraid, but I relate to that because I would be terrified. And I, I, I think um, as to Josh and his portrayal of Armin. Josh is amazing. Incredible. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Just absolutely incredible. You know, since the beginning of the show um, up to, you know, everything that he's done, I, I just, yeah, I, I have so much respect for him as an actor. Um, I, I think he's just done an, an amazing job. Uh -oh. um, Josh, what Josh brings to it is a, such an honest fear, right? Like, because we would all be terrified. I wouldn't even make it into the scouts. What? I would be like, girl A, who gets hit by the boulder, day no. one. Like, no. it was like, oh yeah, like, let's just hide and we'll be fine. Like, no, like, I feel like he, he brings this level of humanity because the rage, especially in the first few seasons, the rage that Aaron has is so palpable. Yeah. Right, and it's so and so visceral because of what's happened to his family, and like the sorrow and fear that Mikasa feels, like the the dedication that she has, and the drive that she has, and the fight that she has is all based on fear, right? Like her fear is fear of losing her adopted family, fear of losing Aaron, fear of losing Armin, and so everything that she does is motivated by fear, uh, and she fights to fight off that fear, but it's all fear-based. And like Armin being less physically capable, uh, but mentally more so and strategically more so, and then acknowledging his fear and like living in it. I, I feel like each of the main characters has a fear and are driven by that fear. And it just manifests in different ways, right? Like in Aaron, it manifests in rage and revenge. And in Mikasa, it manifests in protection and fighting to keep the little family she still has. And then in Armin, it, it just comes out honestly. So like, I get it. He's a little whiny, but like, it's all fear. Like, it, I think if any human was put in that position, it would, your number one feeling would be like how to survive and how do you figure out how to survive is like, you don't eat the poison berries or you run from the giant genitalist monsters. I, I do, I, I will say of <clears throat> like my, my exposure, my journey with all, all of anime, one of the most, one of the biggest transitions is that where they look to Armin and they're like, no, that's, that's the guy. Armin, mm -hmm. it's all on you now. We're either going to all live or all die, and it's all on you. And that, when he rises to that moment, is, I think, one of the coolest because of where he comes from, right? He comes mm -hmm. from that, like, and so I guess, um, so let me walk back the word fear and, and go forward with what allowed me to continue with Mikasa and Aaron is their refusal to be inactive. So like Mikasa is scared. She's scared 24 hours a day that she's not enough to protect her friends. But she, but I'll be damned if that chick doesn't, she, for, not for a second, does that mean she watches? She's in there. She's ready to fight. She's like, give me new blades. Give me new gas. Get me the fuck out there because I got Titans to kill. And Aaron, people, man, he's just willing. He's willing. Like at, he has the worst ideas. It's all going to go wrong, but I'll be damned if he's going to sit by. And I, for me, I think it was beautiful and in, in they, they ruined my idea of him until we needed him. And then he's like, okay, the whole fate of humanity rests on me, put me in coach. And that was a really cool moment. That was a, but man, for me in my like life with attack on Titan, that was like, that was like two weeks ago. So I spent like years can't stand this guy, and then like two weeks ago, I just found out like he's gonna save humanity. So I just <laughs> gotta change my language. I have to, update it. you know what I mean? I just I was used to Armin as this character, and now he's like that. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, I I think that's one of the things that is so cool about this show is the growth of the characters and. Yeah. The changing of perspective and, and you know, um, one really cool thing and without spoiling is uh, you see these other people and you see some of their perspective right at the beginning of this new season. And it's really interesting to go, oh, 
So that's that's what they were doing. That's what they felt. That's that's why they made these decisions and 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 that's how it affected, you know, the characters that we've lived with for so long in those ways. Um and and it's it's just so interesting. So I I, I can't <laughs> I can't talk highly enough about this show. It's it's just it's been so long that it's that it's been kind of out there and it's kept my interest and I don't I don't know of another show that's done that um quite the same way. Did you what what offered more twists and turns for you? Dong and Rampa or Attack on Titan? <laughs> Dong and Rampa is another great show. Um but I never felt like I, I was like the whole time and done. It was the same thing. I'm like, who's good. I don't know. And I, I think that's what has led to such spectacular fan, like both the fan base for Dong and Rampa and the fan base for attack on Titan. There's a lot of similar veracity for yeah. the love of it. I think what's so cool about Dong and Rampa is that the differences in characters that they were able to create in these worlds yes. and putting them in like such an extreme situation. I, I, I look at Danganronpa as like the coolest murder mystery ever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, from my perspective too, cause I'm like the detective character in the first game. I knew nothing about what was going to happen. And it was like, I'm just following this murder mystery and anyone could die. And these yeah. characters are so interesting and colorful and um, it's, it's cool. But Attack on Titan is a different thing altogether. It's just oh, sure. the, the twists and the way that it changes yeah. the entire world um, so often um, it is it's just interesting. It's yeah. so unique. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I, I'm just so thankful that I get to be a part of it in, in the way that I do. Trina, do you have anything that you're in that is that offers a similar like, man? I thought I, I, I just you know to me the the first time it was done to me in anime was Trigun, and you know you you think you're watching like an old Western anime, and then they have that scene where everyone's in space and they're fight, and I'm like, I don't, I just literally don't know that I <laughs> the only thing that I knew for the last two weeks of my life is real. <laughs> um, I think. As far as the, my catalog of work, um, Attack on Titan has definitely been the show that has provided the most surprises um, and the most twists, um, maybe other than Steins Gate. But Attack on Titan, hands down, has been the show that's like, oh, I'm sorry, we were, were what? Now, oh, now there's now there's guns. Okay, there's guns now, guys. Now there are guns. Um, like it's it's just it's definitely been the show that's been uh, had the most twists and turns. And and you're I know a lot of people really love Jiro. Like absolutely super adore. Did you um, like how much time have you had to to spend with My Hero Academia and what like in terms of when when people would come up to you at conventions and stuff mm -hmm. like. Are they, is it Mikasa? Is it Jiro? Like, what are people, what is people's experience about, like, with Jiro not being, like, one of the real powered heroes? I feel like it, the Jiro fan base is spectacular. Yeah, My Hero Academia has been such an amazing show, and it's touched so many amazing people. Uh, and I've been so fortunate to meet so many awesome fans and people through the show. Um, and I think that um, Jiro's relatability has to do with, the fact that she, um, especially in the first season, is she changes a lot, right? Like she starts and she, uh, in the beginning, she has a lot of walls built up and she's a mystery. And uh, then like the walls kind of come down over time as she makes friends with uh, the other kids. And uh, she's, you know, just a, a normal punk rock teenager with famous rock star parents, just like you are, you know? Uh, <laughs> so I think, um, I think people just relate to Jiro because she, She's, uh, you know, has walls built up like many of us do. And then, you know, those walls come down over time when you learn to trust people and 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 listen to them when they're like, Trina, no. Um, and you you have uh, you have real friends in your life. And, and it, I think that's kind of her her um, relatability. I don't think that's a word. You're welcome. Is there is there a version of Hero 2 that's singing that's on the Internet? Uh, I have been asked to sing that song. <laughs> um, I have not. I have not as of yet. Um, 
I, I would like to, but I am sure I would not do it justice. Um, what? <laughs> she, I mean, that is an amazing song and it's definitely it a go-to get pumped up song. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, that's on your playlist and, and you, you, yeah. I, I think honestly, there are, um, there's a couple things that I'll go, you say run, I'll play. That's, it's never, it's never far beyond my reach. Um, the fight with, uh, All Might versus the Nomu where he tells us what it means to go beyond. <laughs> Yeah. All, it's it's YouTube knows when I'm reaching for that. <laughs> and the other one is Hero 2. I feel like it's such a special, um, you know, like, um, and, and I think that's part of like what Deku is going through. His, like when he, re when he finally realized like he can't be the brawler that he always wanted to be. Like when he realized he'll never be All Might, like yeah. he, he might have all for one, but like he'll literally – he, he's going to break. He's going to break in half in 32 pieces and he's going to die. And he, he's like, how do I go forward as a hero without being a brawler? Um, yeah. I feel like Jiro, like the provisional licensing exam was a great, like she's, she's there. Like she, she's there when they save Denki Kaminari and it's her and Momo. In fact, Jiro and Momo, I feel like a lot of times, um, end up on the same team with each other. And it's just so, man, those chicks are just so smart that I love. <laughs> I think that's why I love Mika so, so like, she's just so, just so smart. So has it together that it's, it's, I love that those women are out there and available breaking stereotypes and, and showing people that like, you can have this. I don't know. You, you tell me they're your characters. I, I like them. <laughs> Bryce, do you have any characters that sing? Um, well, I I play a character named Adrian, aka Cat Noir, uh, in Miraculous Ladybug. And uh there's a Christmas special, and I he's see that one. Christmas special. Um, so uh yes, Autotune is my friend. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna Google that when we get off. I have to hear you singing. Check it out, a song called Cat in the Night. Eh? Um, it's it's all right, I like it. You I know, bet it's amazing. I, I, I tried my best. I, I saw that Adrian would sing and uh, immediately got the lyrics in the song. And uh, my mom is a fantastic singer. So I, I practiced with my mom before I went in and did it. And I think it helps. Um, so it was, it was great, uh, but I, I don't do a ton of singing. Um, I, I did sing also, I worked on a kid's show called Rough Rough Tweet and Dave, where I play Hattie the Hamster. He's a talking hamster. Um, and uh, I sang a little bit of kids songs in that. Um, and I thought that was great. So I can do character singing, all right. Um, we have to go to a karaoke bar, like that is it. The next convention we're at, we're going oh, to karaoke. Man. Oh, oh, man. We're going to a karaoke panel. Okay. <sighs> Have, have any of you uh, met Michael Antonakis? Uh, or is anyone friends with Michael? He's Alexios in, um, I almost said in Attack on Titan. He's Alexios. That's not a thing. Um, Assassin's Creed. In Assassin's Creed, he's Alexios. And we met at Sec Anime. I heard in one of your hangouts you were talking about Sec, Sec Anime, Bryce. And yeah. we ended up at 1.42 a.m. at a karaoke bar in Sacramento singing Michael Bolton together because uh, we just, we, like, we just became quick friends. And I, man, I love a good excuse to just sing. Did, did any of you do musical theater, like, when you were yeah. young? I yeah. did. I did not. Um, I found that there's, you know, two kinds of voice actors. There's those voice actors that, can sing and, and are great. And then the other ones like me that don't. Oh. Um, so I, I, uh, I try. Um, <laughs> I bet you're great, honey. I'll go sing some journey at karaoke. That'll be, yes. cool. it'll, it'll be, be terrible and, and it'll be great. Oh, uh, okay. So that's all right, chat. That's, that's our next goal is when the world um, comes back that we have to figure out where we're going to do uh, karaoke. We have to all end up at a, at a convention. I was really trying to find what we were talking. I was trying to find where you're at in the Christmas special, Bryce. 
I wanted to get like a nice freeze frame of you like just sing. Is it at the end of the Christmas special? It's, it's all throughout. I mean, <laughs> are you singing the whole way through? Not the whole time. I mean, I have a couple, I have a couple songs. But if you, if you uh, search Cat in the Night, I think that's one that'll come up. Okay. So everybody go check this out. Um, <laughs> if you want to hear me sing. If you want to hear, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in chat. We're going to put this in chat uh, so that everybody, okay, go listen to Bryce sing <laughs> Cat Noir. All right. Nice. Okay. There you go, Bryce. It's going to, all right, it just went out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, everyone, as, as always happens, every Color World Live, we come to the end of our first panel, and we have to say goodbye. Guys, what a what a real pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing stories and answering questions and going down places. Thank you for forgiving me for just really not being <laughs> on so much. I saw that. Thank thank you for hosting us and putting these on, you know, such a a, a challenging time not being able to connect with people and I always look forward to being able to do this and hang out and um, you know, all the stuff that that we get to do here at Color World gives us some semblance of convention. So thank you, thank you for that. And you should probably explain to everyone who's watching, um, you know, what what the next panel is all about and how to get there. And yep, I just saw get that your questions ready. Yep. So for the VIP, bam, uh, go <laughs> any any yeah. ticket holder. Go ahead. Make sure you're in that Color World Live VIP only Facebook group. Uh, if, if you are, then the panel will stream live from right inside there. If you do not have a Facebook account, and there are tons of people that don't, just shoot us an email at the moderator at colorworldbooks.com, and then we will get you a limited link that goes right to that panel that you can participate in the VIP panel so that you can ask questions. So Facebook, Color World Live VIP only, request your access. They'll check it, check it against your ticket. And then um, for those that just are like, no way, Mark Zuckerberg, um, then just shoot us an email and we'll get you a link. And we'll see everybody in 27 minutes at the VIP panel. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks for watching.